All right, guys. Uh, the gate was five million. The attendance is seventeen thousand four hundred and eighty-seven. Second highest grossing event at the arena. The UFC is now one, two, and three all time here. Um, obviously, you know what the fight of the night was, and then uh, they both get fifty thousand, and then uh, Span and Buckley were performance of the night. Congratulations to all Dan, of them. Dan, if you're right, have you seen anything like that before where after the fight's over, and it's an incredible fight, the crowd stayed for 10 minutes. Yeah, well, I already had name. put the belt on, walked all the way back to my room, we were talking, and then by the time he got on and was doing his interview, literally almost everybody was still in their seats. It's incredible. Yeah, well, it should. I mean, it's, it's, it's an incredible show of respect for both guys. I mean, what a hell of a fight, and... and Khalil Roundtree, I mean, another level of tough. I was going to say, do you, th you know, obviously Alex is one of your biggest stars, if not your biggest star right now. But do you think Khalil, with this performance, like, you know, he's going to be become a draw in the future and that people are going to want to actively go out and see him fight? Yeah, I mean, you have to respect this guy. But, I mean, does, does anybody, did this not play out the way everybody thought it would? I mean, everybody knew. You know, everybody at first was like, oh, he's ranked number eight. But you knew it was going to be a badass fight. You knew it was going to be a badass fight. You can never measure heart. You know, you don't know how that's going to go. Huh? Now you know. In the uh, th third round and maybe in the end of the fourth round there, Alex's jab really started to, uh, to pick up. And did you feel like when he was landing that jab in the one-two that that was really the difference in the fight where Khalil maybe wasn't able to breathe after that? I felt like the difference was the low leg kick. And when he started calf kicking him, uh, he was destroying that leg, and, and he was having trouble putting pressure on it, and he was having trouble with his punch and power, his movement, everything, and he systematically just started picking him apart. Um, you know, and, and he said, when I watched the feature, he said, listen, this guy hits hard. He's tough. He's this. He's that. And this guy has a dream, but my fight IQ will win this fight. He said that in, in, his, in, his, in, uh, in, in the combo feature, and that's exactly the way it played out. Two other questions for me. One, one um, you know, you were so high on Anderson Silva during his run. Alex has lost to uh, Israel, but he, he's beaten probably a better quality of opponent than Anderson did in that, in that run, especially in the first part of that run. Uh, how do you think this run of Alex's compares to what Anderson did at that point? There's no doubt. What this guy has done is unbelievable. Not, not just in if you want to compare. And the way he's done it. The way he's done it. I mean, this guy destroys everybody. And then the last question, what did you think of the judging in the, uh, the uh, co-main event? I mean, it seemed to me... I thought your judging tonight was atrocious. Yeah. I felt like I was in a, at a boxing match in Ireland tonight. <clears throat> you know, right here. Uh, yeah. Obviously, uh, one of the, appe the, the appeals of Alex is he fights pretty regularly, like almost like he's like 300, 303, and now Salt Lake. After a fight like this, at some point, I know you like fighters that are active, but you just kind of have to tell them to like maybe pump the brakes for a little bit, especially after a fight like this? Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know what this guy, I mean, this guy always wants to fight. He's 38, too. It's not like he's 28 and he's got this many fights. And But I don't know. I don't know. We'll see how it all plays out. And I know you just said the judges were atrocious, but what did you make of the Mario Bautista-Jose Aldo fight? Um, I thought the judging was atrocious tonight. I'll just leave it at that. It was, it was atrocious. Um, Kayla Harrison, uh, obviously a lot of people thought she would kind of run through her opponents when she came to the UFC, had a hard-fought decision win over Ketlin. What do you make of her performance? And then obviously you showed her on the split screen when Juliana was getting the, the belt wrapped around her waist. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, when you, when you get here, and I say it all the time, when you start to break into the top five, the top three, it gets tougher, you know. And, and, and Juliana and, and uh, Raquel are both dogs. I mean, they're dogs, so it should be fun. And Kayla did a lot of, she, she carried a lot of the promotion for this fight specifically, even in kind of the event. I mean, she drew a lot of numbers on social and media day. And if you kind of compare it to like Michael Chandler, MVP, even Ben Askren, when they all came over, like they just kind of hit the ground running promoting wise. Like mm -hmm. they want to do all of the appearances. They carry the pressers. Is, is that them turning it on when they get to the UFC or do you recognize this before? And no, that's I, don't, I don't know if it's turning it on, but it's just another level when you get here. They feel it, you know, you, you feel it. You fucking rot away in the PFL for years or the fucking Bellator and shit, and then you finally get here, you feel it. 
And then, uh, not the judging, but what did you make of the referee in the Cesar Almeida Ijo Pretaria fight where uh, he kept resetting them? There were like four eye pokes, there was a low blow. Yeah, I, I, I missed that. I was in my room and we were talking to people, and I know, but Ratner walked in right after it happened and was like, yeah, that, that ain't happening again tonight. And then I'm curious your take on this because I asked Roman and Kayla about this. In the Roman Deleuze Kevin Holland fight when he broke his ribs, Kevin's coach was asking, like, do you want to continue? Do you want to continue? And the commentary felt it should be on the coach to make that call because fighters are going to want to fight through it. And it might not look good because they might not want to fight, but they don't want to be the ones to throw in the towels. And it should be the coaches that, throw, that decide their fighters shouldn't fight. What do you think? I don't know. I don't know the story. I don't know what happened. I, I, I'm, I, I didn't hear it, and I don't know what happened. It, but It looks, looks like he broke his ribs on, like, turning. And then when he stood up, he was like, I, I broke my ribs. I don't know if he broke or popped a rib. I don't know if we know. Uh, let me see if I got that information here. Um, no, I don't. I, I don't have that info, but popped, broke, I don't know, but yeah, it's tough to it's tough to maneuver around with with, with a popped it, it doesn't even have to be broken. All you gotta do is pop that cartilage in between the ribs. No fun. Dana, going back to that Aldo fight, you know, in the third round Mario came out and sort of went for a takedown, referee separated them, immediately go straight for the takedown again. Do you think the referee could have been more active in quitting on the stalling there? I always think that the referee should be more active on that, a hundred percent. Especially when somebody keeps doing it to stall. And you guys aren't gonna fucking let up on this, are you? I guess we'll get into it. Um, if you I don't know if you're judging on a guy, whether is it control, if it's this or that. Um, if you're not trying to fight, how do you win the fight, right? And if you're looking at attempted takedowns, well, what about stuffing the takedowns? Uh, it just madness. There is a difference between offensive grappling and just wasting time. Right? 100%. And it's not just the referees that need to recognize that, but clearly the judges as well. When you can tell that the guy definitely doesn't want to stand and strike and just wants to stall against the fence, yes, the refs, that's their job. They're supposed to see it. When they see it continually happening and, and, and that – the guy is not trying to win the fight, then you keep breaking them up. Do you think Conor McGregor tweeted about his idea for stopping stalling, was introducing a stalling clock, and if you go back to the same move, the clock ticks down and you let them be in that position for less and less time? Is Maybe not that idea, but would you like to see referees? if they? Yeah, go I don't even think you need a clock. I, I mean, it's common sense. When, when the guy keeps doing it and is doing everything he can to not fight and not win the fight, as a ref, you should break it up immediately. I mean, if he just did it three rounds in a row and keeps doing it, you know, and they get there, he doesn't get the takedown, give him a couple seconds, see if he gets the takedown, then break it up. And just going back to the main event, I know you've already touched on it, but, you know, I think sometimes, because Khalil's like a, a sort of an empathetic guy, sometimes people kind of judge his mindset and maybe think he might not have the mental fortitude to reach spots like this. For him to show that sort of balls in the fourth round and meet Alex head on and take those punches and still come on even when it's... From the first round? Yeah. He had no fear from the first round. Khalil Roundtree went in there and started going at it the minute the bell rang. No fear, no jitters, no nerves. I'm, I'm not, I mean, maybe he had some jitters and nerves. If he did, he didn't show it. He went right in against one of the baddest dudes of all time and just started mixing it up with him. It was awesome. Hi, Dana, over here. Hi. I'm hiding behind all the cameras. Um, Alexander Hernandez told us today that this morning he saw a shooting on the streets. And Brandon Jesus. Royval went and chased the shooter, and I guess caught, they caught the shooter. I'm wondering if you heard of that, and if you think that's a smart Our guys idea. caught the shooter? Well, I don't know if he caught him, but I oh. guess he was on the phone with 911, but they caught the shooter. Holy shit. <laughs> is, that, is that a smart idea for your headliner next week? I don't think so, no. I mean, this has happened in the past. It's weird how much this happens to our guys. Um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't even know what to say to that. Um, there was also a, a power slap study that came out by um, a medical journal. Doctors watched the first episode of Power Slap mm -hmm. and determined from just watching the, the first episode that there was concussions happening. Sounds legit. Yeah, I'm wondering at what kind of... They watched one episode of the show, know nothing about medicals or what we do or any of the studies we've done. Sounds like these typical doctors that look for attention to me. That's what I thought. Yep, thank um, you. Yeah, and, and last question. Um, you mentioned already Kayla a little bit, but PFL posted a video um, about a few hours before her fight, kind of putting her down and using that as a, a way to promote their their upcoming fight with Larissa. What do you think as a promoter? Do you think that's the right kind of play to go? Why? <laughs> I think when you're losing as much money as they are, fucking go for it. Throw, fucking throw the kitchen sink at it. These guys, this guy just came out recently and said, you know, we're going to spend more money than they did on the Sphere. 
Well, that sounds fucking brilliant. How many tickets are you going to sell? Yeah, they're not very bright. So if I were them, I would do what, listen, it's all fair. Knock yourself out. They're, they're drowning. Drowning. They, they suck. I mean, they're, they're not good at what they do. So it, it, I guess you would just keep trying anything you can to make something stick. All good. Dana, one more in the front yeah, right yeah. here. Um, just because you brought up this fear, it reminded me. Um, the WWE had a big event earlier today, too, and at the press conference, AAA said he watched Nocha UFC, and he goes, that's what I want to do. And has he reached out to you at all? Because he, he was all about the graphics and the production value and everything when, at, at this press conference today. Oh, I didn't even know that. That's the first I heard of it. Awesome. Listen, we're all on the same team, so we can help. Dana, right here in the yep. back. Obviously, tonight was a big night, but you've had a lot of great cards. Well, this was, what, the third one here in Salt Lake City, and it seems like you're really starting to build a huge fighting spirit culture out here in Salt Lake City. How important is it to you to have, you know, big opportunities for guys in these cities and also bring shows to cities like this? Let me tell you about this city. So, you know, like you just said, and we're number one, two, and three all time in the gate, and I'm sure you guys have experienced the, moving around this city, the nicest people in the world. These people are all really nice. Um, and tell me how fun it is to fly one hour and sell out and have this kind of energy an hour away from Vegas. Um, yeah, no, it's been great out here, and uh, yeah, I love it. When you get to make a market in a place like this where, you like, like you said, it's a beautiful area that people come to support, does that encourage you to start doing that in other areas too where the UFC may have never even been yet, but you see what you did here and you want to do that in other places? Well, you know that's what I do, right? I mean, that's what I do. Um, we're, we're talking now, we're going to start hitting some of these places that we haven't hit in a while. Uh, Pre-COVID, uh, we're looking at like Seattle right now, we're looking at going back to Chicago and some of these other places like that. So that'll be coming up in 25. There was an amazing show in Tennessee. I don't know, man. That might be an idea. A couple of years ago, you guys had an awesome show out there. But last from me, you're a guy who's accomplished quite a lot, man. You're getting into the boxing world now. It's another endeavor for you to have some fun with and do something new. I wanted to ask you, what are your biggest overall goals for yourself in your career at this point? Um, you know, m my thing has always been the same since day one. I want to continue to grow the sport. I want to continue, like you said, to go into markets that we've never uh, been to. I want to continue to invest in the sport, um, you know, like the PI in Mexico and many other I ideas that I've had for the last several years. So I'm just going to keep doing that. And also, I see your knuckles, man. You've been training. You've been hitting some pads. Oh, do they look uh, busted? Oh, Jesus <laughs> Christ. No, that's from, uh, that's from um, Khalil. Oh, okay. Man. Yeah, yeah. I didn't even see that. <laughs> it's definitely not for me. <laughs> I've been cold plunging, not hitting anything, believe me. Thank you. I'm too old to be hitting anything. Dana, right over here. Yeah. Just talking a little bit about Utah, the main staple of this entire state is Court McGee. He's been in the UFC now for 14 years, gets right. the win tonight. How much has he meant to the UFC and also just building the sport of MMA in Utah specifically? Well, all these guys do. I mean, all of them do. But, but Court's, uh, you know, obviously a – a special guy with with with, a, with an incredible story, and um, you know, I, I saw him when he came out tonight. Came out of the octagon and just couldn't be a nicer human being. And I'm I'm really happy for him and his family. You guys, done with me? We're here, just hey. kind of following up on that a little bit with, with just the way that you the events in Utah like this continue to build on themselves. What is it in the water where it feels like? I mean, it started with an incredible kick and then a backflip, and then obviously that masterpiece out there like what is it about this state do you think where where UFC just kind of builds year after year on itself what's the question just why why do you it why do you think it just gets better and better every year here in Utah well UFC? I'll tell you this the, the the sport is incredible right and the live event is amazing Nobody leaves one of these live events and goes, yeah, I don't ever want to do one of these again. So every time we come, you have to assume that new people are experiencing it for the first time. Um, somebody who's experienced it many times will bring somebody new. And, I mean, that's how we've grown for the last almost 25 years. That, that's literally the formula. I hope I answered your question. No, perfect. Thank you. Done with me? Yeah? Have a great night, you guys. Thanks.